What's up guys, Shane Starnes with Droid Modder X here. Today we're going to be taking a look at a three axis gimbal system for your cell phone. So cell phones for the past year or so have had awesome cameras. You can't really beat the camera on a Galaxy S6 or even an LG G4. I mean, these are DSLR quality cameras. The only thing that seems to be a little wonky on these is optical image stabilization. So you can turn stabilization off completely and what you're gonna end up with is a video that's not stable at all. If you turn on optical image stabilization, you get these wavy artifacts in the top corner and the bottom corners of your screen, which make video look a little wonky. And for some of you, it would actually make the video unusable. Kumicam has resolved this with their three axis gimbal. Now this thing is not necessarily budget friendly, but if you want some cinematic capabilities with your cell phone, this is the ticket for that. The Kumicam will improve quality in your videos give you that cinematic feel. This is for uh, people that are looking to break into the cinematic movie making realm. Anybody that shoots videos on YouTube, this can definitely be a tool in your arsenal for excellent quality videos. And then of course, this is also very helpful for anybody that just really wants incredibly uh, cinematic looking videos of like just their family and their everyday life. You will be able to achieve this with the Kumba Cam. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take it out of the box. We're gonna give a look at its quality, its build quality. Um, we're going to look at how it operates and then I'm going to show you guys some before and after footage without image stabilization and then using the Kuma Cam. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay you guys, so this won't be an official unboxing because I've already been using this now for a couple of weeks so it'd be kind of pointless to unbox it. But I will show you the box real quick. This is the Kuma Cam box that it comes in here. And I'll just show you the little styrofoam insert. It's pretty well put together for a retail package. And it's really nice to have this because you can carry it around and not worry about damaging the Kumba Cam. So basically, uh, you've got a spot in there for your two rechargeable 18350 LiPo batteries. What's great about having those batteries is the fact that you can just go purchase some spares anywhere. And if you happen to run out of battery, then you can just swap them out. So it's really nice that it does include those type of batteries. Uh, but anyways, there's a spot for those there. you got your charger slot here. You can put the actual gimbal here and put any cords or uh, counterweights or even your remote there. You put them in there, and that makes for really nice and easy, convenient carrying. So the user manual here is something that Kubacam is working on, uh, specifically the spot here where it tells you how to actually use the Kubacam. They have this grid here that makes sense if you really study it. Uh, but it's just kind of difficult to understand what they're trying to tell you. It's pretty simple to use. Basically, to turn it on, you just press the power button here. And then you'll hold this middle button here for three seconds. It'll turn on and spring into action. And then you can pan up and down with these buttons or change the mode with this button here. So it's pretty simple. There's only three modes. The only one complaint that I really have about this system is that you have to keep it at 100% charge. Uh, for it to really work. So I was able to get about 20 minutes of use out of this before it would get a little wonky. It said that I had 75% charge, but I would notice that the gimbal, instead of being straight like this, it would begin to sag a little bit. So my phone over here would just begin to sag. That's at 70% charge, so when my light was blinking three times, it would begin to sag and it would become almost unusable. I'd have to plug the batteries back in and charge. So you really want to keep this at about 100% at all if at all possible so you get about like i said 20 minutes of really good use out of it and then you can kind of get some uh, subpar usage out of it for about another hour so looking at the build quality of the kumba cam everything is solid metal so i feel like you could drop this thing and it's not going to break because everything's metal you've got three motors here one here one here and one here and the only thing plastic on this is actually the part that holds the phone uh, but even that, I think, is really solid and sturdy. It's very hard plastic, very rigid. And then everything here is made of metal. You've got these nice grips here and here, so you're not likely to drop it. But if you did, I feel like it would survive a pretty nice drop or several pretty nice drops. Buttons are very nice and tactile. So everything feels really good on this, and I think it's a very well-built device. So you do have a counterbalance here that it comes with. So if you have like a Note 4 or a Nexus 6, you can put your counterbalance on there. Uh, I was able to use the Galaxy S6 pretty well on this. Like I said, even the Galaxy S6 was a little heavy, but not heavy enough to need this counterbalance. 
Um, and then also there is a gravity, center of gravity dial back here. You want to make sure that you do adjust this up or down. Uh, if you don't have that adjusted correctly, then your phone's going to swing and hit that motor right there. So you want to make sure that that is adjusted correctly. Okay, so we'll go ahead and insert the phone into the camera. I mean, into the Kuma Cam here. So it fits just about any size phone from, this is like a Droid Razor HD Max, so it'll fit that pretty easily. And then it'll fit, you know, the Galaxy S6, any iPhone, and then the Note 4 and Nexus 6 fit it just fine. You're not probably going to fit like a Nexus 7 in here, uh, but you'll be able to fit most phones pretty easily. Okay, so we'll insert the batteries here. Just take the little cap off the bottom and then put each of the batteries inside and reinsert the cap. Okay, so to turn it on, we're just gonna press the button on the bottom, and then we will press and hold the mode button for three seconds, and then it just kind of snaps into place. And it starts out in the heading follow mode. As you can see, it kind of pans with you. And just keeps it stable on that axis. And it does a really good job. You guys can see how well it does. And then there's a few other little modes here. This is the mode that I used most was that, that head follow mode where it just kind of pans slightly with you. It just makes for the most smooth shot possible. And then, of course, you can pan up and down with these uh, buttons right here. Okay, the heading lock. If you press the mode button one more time, the heading lock just basically keeps it locked in position. This is great for like interviews where you just want the camera to stay constantly focused on the subject. That's what you're going to get with this mode. So you guys can see that it is not following me at all uh, with the pan. It's just trying to stay focused on one individual point. And then there was one other. But anyhow, you guys can kind of see how this works. Now we'll go ahead and show you guys a demo of the video. I'll show you guys a couple of clips without the Kuma Cam with no image stabilization on the camera, and then I'll show you guys some clips that I used with the Kuma Cam. Okay guys, you can see how big of a difference the Kuma Cam makes in your videos. Uh, that about wraps it up for this Kuma Cam video. I'll be using this in many more videos to come. So be sure you are subscribed for more videos like this in the future. You can find more of me at droidmoderx.com. Follow me on Twitter at droidmoderx. Thanks guys for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.